The 2019 Cape Cutter 19 Rally, held on the east coast of England, covered four Essex rivers, the Crouch, the Roach, the Blackwater and the Cone. The rally began at Fanbridge Yacht Haven, 12 miles upstream through lovely English countryside from the mouth of the River Crouch. When trailing with the Cape Cutter, I leave the boom bolted to the tabernacle, so the first job is to free up the tie-down straps and throw all the halyards over the stern. I then put a roller in the tabernacle so I can move the mast aft and fit the mast bolt, not forgetting to fit the wind indicator first. And then a helper pulls on the force day to raise the mast, the only part I can't do alone. And once the lower bolt is in place, I can attach the force day and tension the rest of the rigging. Then the job is to attach the lazy jacks and main halyards and fix the boom in position with the main sheet. Having done this, I attach the foresails, but I do need to lift the bowsprit for launch as my car is quite tall. Other boats have other arrangements and various skippers have constructed their own mast supports, rigging aids and methods of rigging the boats. Fanbridge benefits from tractor launch included in the launch fee, which makes launch and recovery very easy. Though, as always at our rallies, there's always plenty of people on hand to lend a hand or give advice. And it's always interesting to see how others tackle these various launch tasks, and I always learn a thing or two.
less than seven miles downriver to Burnham on Crouch from Fanbridge, so most of us chose to extend our shakedown cruise to sail past the town itself and then to turn and beat up its tributary, the River Roach, an exceedingly pretty river that offers some lovely creeks to explore. If we had time, we could have spent much longer here, but we settled for anchoring at Yoke's Fleet, where Potton Creek winds off through the Essex marshes. With the right tides, one can pass under the Havengore Bridge and out onto the River Thames itself. On this occasion, we were joined by a Thames barge, which seemed to have the same idea as us, to anchor for a break before heading back to the River Crouch and up past the seals hauled out on the mud. The third day saw our fleet of boats shaken down, ready to pass out of the Crouch and hop up the coast to the next Essex River, the mighty Blackwater. There are extensive sandbanks which extend many miles out to sea, forcing most craft who wish to make this journey to pass over eight nautical miles offshore before being able to turn back into the Blackwater. For shoal draft boats, such as the Cape Cutter, there is an alternative route which cuts across the Buxy Sand reaching out on the northern side of the estuary. This invisible channel, known as the Ray Sand Channel, or Raysen for short, requires the correct state of tide if it's to be crossed safely. A sandbank sounds like a soft and unthreatening obstruction, but the ground is very hard and bottoming out in a swell, or worse still being stranded, would leave a small boat very vulnerable to damage. We were reassured that local advice matched our plan and we set off at 6am, an hour before high water Burnham. The freshening westerly gave us at first a quiet run out of the estuary and then a good fast reach across the sand. The depth fell and fell. The lowest reading on my sounder was 0.1 metres beneath the keel and we were ready to lift the plate, but that was not necessary. A good two miles of offing from the shore is needed as we cross north along St Peter's Flat. Maybe it's so named because it's seemingly so shallow one might walk across miles of water. At last we turned into the Blackwater and beat up our third river towards the creek on the northern bank of the wide estuary to access our target, Tollsbury Marina. Wind on the nose, we motored up the shallow creek and picked up buoys to await the return of the tide. We had several pleasant hours to while away before there'd be water enough for even our shallow draft cape cutters to enter the marina. Tollsbury is famous for having over a hundred boats, large and small, nestling into their mud berths, and we motored up between the lines of boats towards the marina, which fortunately for us has a sill and we were soon passing over this and guided to our berths for the night.
was looking forward to picking up some crew, having sailed on my own thus far, and Brightling Sea was the obvious choice for this, with its access at all states of tide. So it was, we left Tolsbury, sailed past Mersey Island, and into the mouth of our fourth river, the Cone. Two, one, go. Two, one, go. Having collected our crew and topped up our supplies, we sailed back into the black water, watching stormy skies approach. Sure enough, the wind dropped to nothing and the heavens opened. But after the rain had passed, we had a blissful evening sail up to Haybridge Basin, probably the most picturesque of the overnight moorings on this trip. Time and tide wait for no man, and it was an early departure from our canal lock berth at Haybridge. We sailed on the remainder of the flood tide upstream to the lovely Essex town of Malden to admire the Thames barges and moor up briefly to grab some fresh provisions. By that time the tide was ebbing again, and we followed this back down the Blackwater. Young Alice loves riding on the dinghy, towed behind, waving at the passing boats. Our destination that day was the delightful anchorage known as Pie Fleet, a little past Brightling Sea up the cone tucked behind Mersey Island. Nicky and Alice had promised themselves a swim, but the water was shallower than expected, so their immersion was short and followed, as always, by hot chocolate. We ate aboard that night, hosting Paul, skipper of Sapphire. The wind blew briskly through the night, but we slept peacefully, tucked in the lee, hearing the bird calls and lulled by the lapping water. Following a family lay day in Brightling Sea, we had to bring our plans to return to the River Crouch forward by one day. A strong southwesterlies were forecast which would be on the nose for that passage. We made our way slowly at first out of the cone against the last of the flood, but once out of the tide we made excellent progress past the dengue flats that separate the mouths of Blackwater and Crouch. We had much more water under us across the ray sand this time than on our journey out, and had a comfortable reach to the mouth of the crouch. We then beat our way into the river on gradually shortening tacks.
This final journey back to our origin at Fanbridge took us on or past all four of our Essex rivers, Cone, Blackwater, Crouch and Roach, a fitting end to a most enjoyable week in company. <laughs>